Hello everyone. Uh, my name uh, Abdul Jalil Azad Koi. I am from Erbil, Kurdistan, uh, the north part of the uh, Iraq. I have BDS and MSc in oral maxillofacial surgery, and uh, I am in the final stage of the uh, PhD in oral surgery. I am the founder of Ident Polyclinic in Cosmetic and Implant Dentistry. Also the scientific advisor for the uh, uh, root implant system in Kurdistan and Iraq. It's my honor to speak with you and give you a lecture regarding a very important topic uh, in implantology and especially the one piece implant, which is the soft tissue part of the one piece implant. Really many said, how we can control the soft tissue around the one piece implant. It is a very difficult because as we all know for the two piece, we have the screws, the gingival formers, or you can make the temporary crown or bridge. Then you can make changes on the temporary crown or the bridge, and you can get very nice emergence profile. The question is how we can get very nice emergence profile for the one piece implant. So I worked hard in the previous month on this topic and I treated many cases I would like to share it with you. In the beginning, the objective for my presentation, as you all know, the one piece implant uh, introduced many years ago. Uh, however, in the last years, they were accepted as uh, one of the treatment options for the treatment of the clinical situation that we face in our clinic. But as we all know, uh, despite the clinical success of one piece implants, there are some concerns regarding the soft tissue around the neck of one piece implants, especially in the aesthetic zone. So the aim of this pre presentation is to discuss the way of optimizing the soft tissue around one piece dental implants. I don't go too much in detail uh, about the theory, but I would like to share with you this uh, consonants report about the peri-implantitis. And I would like to read this part, which is highlighted with uh, red in line. Peri-implant microcytes occur in about 80% of sub subjects restored with and 56 of subjects which is really a very huge number of peri-implantitis. And we face this problem in our clinical cases. And especially, I think, regarding the one-piece implant, because it's more difficult how to deal with the soft tissue with such type of the implant. The tools and materials that used in this presentation are a VPI cervical system, which I talk in detail about this system and how to use it for one piece implant. And one piece implant that's used, most of them is compressive and basal implants, belongs to the root implant system trade company. Uh, I start uh, with this case, a male patient came to my clinic uh, with many missing teeth, as you see on the OPG. And he wants to restore this one the upper uh, right first premolar, as you see, the patient have missing both premolars on the upper right side. But as you know, the space become so much limited. And now only we have the retained root of the upper four. So after discussion, we, uh, this is the clinical situation. This was the OPG, and this is the clinical situation. You see this is the retained root. And after giving anesthesia, we uh, extracted the tooth. This is the retained root. Then we have this guide, which is very, very important to understand in order to choose the dimension of the, uh, of the mold to be prepared for the customized healing abutment that I will discuss now. In this way, after extraction, usually we use the, the guide, which comes in different shapes and dimensions in order to prepare a customized healing abutment. 
So what's Servico system? It's produced by the innovative holding. It's very simple and efficient tool. Uh, it aid you to shape up the soft tissue around implants and ensure health, of course, as we talked about, and aesthetics at the same time. It's composed of two kits, as you see. This one is called the uh, Servico Mold, and this one is called a Servico Guide. The idea is that to make the emergence profile of the soft tissue resemble to the natural tooth. For example, in case for the central incisors, as you see, they prepared for you inside the kit a guide like that, so you know the size, the space that you have. This one is the perfect, perfect one, for example. And uh, same is true for the lateral incisor, for example, and for the canine, for the premolars also, for molars, for molars you have two shapes, you have square and elongated. And by this mold, after you choosing, for example, the shape and the dimension of the space that you have, depending on this guide, you fabricate the customized healing abutment by using this mold. Here, as you see, this is the cervical guide. You have many tools inside the cervical guide. Uh, starting with these tools, we have for the anterior three different tools. One, as you see, called AS, which means anterior small, usually used for the upper lateral incisor and lower central and lateral incisors. And we have anterior medium, which is used usually for the upper and lower canines. And we have anterior large, which is usually used for the upper central incisor. Then we have for the premolars, three guides, and with three different sizes, we have premolar small, premolar medium, and premolar large. Why it's provided with uh, three different sizes and dimensions? Of course, because we have facing different clinical situations. Sometimes we face, uh, we see cases with very limited space and others with very large space. Uh, and especially regarding the soft tissue, sometimes we have very thick uh, soft tissue biotype. In this situation, we have to choose the large one. And when we have thin soft tissue biotype, we have to choose the smaller one. And regarding the molars, we have two shapes, square and elongated. The elongated one, one usually used for the lower molars. And the square molars is usually used for the upper molars. To explain more regarding the uh, guide uh, for the premolars, as I said, we have premolar small, premolar medium, and premolar large. All the dimensions is written on the guide. For example, for premolar large, the buccolingual dimension is about 9 millimeter, and the mesodistal dimension is about 5.5 millimeter. And the same is true for all other guides. As you see, all the dimensions is written and it will more help you during the uh, clinical uh, treatment. Here we have the handle also provided by the kit. And we have two holes on the buccal or lingual, also on the mesial and distal. You can fix the handle to the guide and it is used to, to make the measurements on the soft tissue and the space that you have and you want to replace with the implant. In this manner, as you see, this step is the most important step in starting to, mas to master the soft tissue for the implant, for the two piece and the one piece, it is the same. Here, as you see, as you see, if you have a premolar missing, you can choose any of the premolar sizes, premolar small, medium or large, uh, fix it to the handle and place it in the space to estimate whether this shape regarding the buccolingual measurement and also mesodistally. If you think that the space is too large, you have to choose the uh, premolar large, this one. But sometimes you may need this one because you don't have 
the soft tissue, the, as I said, the soft tissue is too thin or the space is too much uh, small. And also depending on the soft tissue biotype, if you have very thick soft tissue biotype, it's better to choose uh, the larger one. And if you think that the soft tissue type is not good, so it's better to choose one smaller. And regarding the uh, cervical guide, as we said, we have these tools called the guide, and also we have these cylindrical tabs, these tabs. What is the use of these cylindrical tabs? This tool, it can be used for choosing the diameter of the implant that you are going to use. For example, in this photo, as you see, it should be with light contact with the adjacent tooth, like that, as you see. So it's better if you have seven millimeter mesodistal dimension, it's better to choose an implant of three to four millimeter diameter. Why? Because as we all know, we have seven millimeter, you have to leave at least 1.5 millimeter on each side with the adjacent tooth to be away from the dangerous zone. And why it's four, between four and three and four, if you don't have enough bone buccolingually, we choose four. And if you have very good bone, you can choose, for example, four millimeter and etc. for other tabs. Also, the cylindrical tab it, you can drill through the center of the cylindrical tab and aid you to drill in a correct, in the correct way, in the center of the uh, mesodistal dimension. Actually, I don't use this uh, during my surgery, especially for the one-piece implant, but maybe for the two-piece implant, as the manufacturer, they said, it is good. But for the one-piece, I don't do it like that. And also inside the cervical guide, we have these pins. Uh, also, it can be used in this way. You can, when you drill, you can place the, the chosen guide and the pin to know whether this guide is good or not, or not. Because still, you just drilled the pilot drill. You can make some changes. So this is very important. And secondly, Inside the kit of the uh, VPI cervical system, we said we have the cervical guide and we talked about, and we have the cervical mold, this mold. By this mold, we can make the customized healing abutment. How, when we choose, for example, the premolar small, we have to go back to the mold and to choose the premolar small the space inside the mold with premolar small in order to make a customized healing abutment. And I will show you in the case. For example, as you see, this is the transfer of the root implant system for the compressive and the basal implant. I usually use the transfer for making the customized healing abutment and also for the impression post. Also, we have the second choice, the bend out. It can be also, it can used uh, for the making the customized healing abutment. But I think two points should be considered regarding uh, how, which one to choose. As you, as you see, the transfer is more thinner than that the bend out. So in case for the uh, anterior small, as you see here in the photo, sometimes you don't have enough space for the uh, composite. So it's better to choose the uh, burn, uh, the transfer, not the burn out. This is number one. Number two, as we all know, the transfer, it's more attentive than that of the burn out on the implant. So I prefer using the, uh, the transfer. Okay. And then of course, the flowable composite, which is better than uh, uh, to choose flowable composite and then in increments light cured in this way. Also, I do some changes. For example, I cut from the uh, transfer in this way. I cut the wings. And sometimes I, I make some retentive grooves in this way with the aid of uh, high-speed turbine. 
why to provide retention, more retention for the uh, flowable composite? Because as we all know, uh, the surface of the trans transfer is very smooth. So I think it's better to make some retentive means in order uh, to provide tension for the uh, flowable composite. Okay. So for this patient, as you see, we use the, uh, the transfer and then we place increments of the flowable composite and then with the aid of the light cure and we prepared a customized healing abutment. This is a customized healing abutment. We made this from this mold. Okay. Then after placement of the uh, implant, as you see, like that, then we cemented the customized healing abutment on the implant on this way until the cement will set. Then after that, we can do splinting. This is the point that I like with this technique. We said we made the customized healing abutment, but plus to that, we can make the splinting in the same visit and in a very easy way. How? By doing acid itching, then bonding, then the flowable composite in this way, we splint the customized healing abutment with the adjacent tooth. Then we can make changes as you wish. You can make the shape of the uh, crown or you can remove from the, uh, the high spots and usually we make it out of occlusion, of course, because it's uh, immediate loading. But the point is that why we have to make splint, this is very important. Because as we all know, regarding the immediate loading, we have to minimize the micro movements on the implant, especially in case for the single tooth uh, replacement. As you see in, the, in this picture, the crown faced to many planes of the movement, the mesiodistal, the bacolingual, the rotational, also the, occlu the occlusally, we have many forces on this crown. So it's prone to movement. It's better to splint the crown with the adjacent tooth, especially for the one-piece implant. One-piece implant, the surface area of the uh, one-piece implant is not like the two-piece implant. In case of the two-piece uh, implant, the surface uh, area is too much, as we all know, because it's, it's cylindrical in shape. But uh, with the compressive uh, implant, also in the basal implant, because it's narrow and conical, so the surface uh, area is few. Also regarding the design, because as we all know, in case of the two-piece implant, we have the anti-rotational groove. This is why the simplintic is very important. I think for the two-piece and the one-piece, but, but, but for the one-piece is uh, mandatory. In case if you have two implants, each implant may splint the other one regarding them uh, and avoiding the mesodistal movement, but still we have the uh, bacopalatal movement or bacolingual movement. And when, whenever you have three implants, it's better. And you have great chance of uh, success. But with one piece implant, uh, you have a great chance of the failure. This is why the splinting is very important. Even for the uh, multiple implants, the splinting is one of the principles to get success for the immediate loading. And if you see, if you have the implant not in the same line, here, if you have on the same line, it is good, of course, better than two, implant, two implants and one implant. But if you have three implants and all of them not in the same line, as you see, as you see in this uh, photo, it's better. And for, for the full arch, it is the best option. Why? Because each implant holds the other one. And if you place the bridge in one piece, you will get the high success rate with the occlusion consideration, of course. And regarding the other points, regarding the uh, torque, this is main one of the main reasons to get uh, success for the immediate loading. You should have very good high torque. Okay. This is why the splinting is mandatory. I usually made splinting with the, for example, for full arch in this way, because all splinted together. Uh, I mean, I make the bridge in one piece, or sometimes I made the supplanting with the uh, fiber bands. 
then I will remove the fiber band or I change the crown. Or in this way, as you see, this is a temporary crown and this is the uh, orthodontic retainer wire. I, and I splint the, the crown with the adjacent tooth. Or in this one, also this is a temporary, it's made from CATCAM. I will cement the crown on the implant and on the adjacent tooth. By this way, I will get good splinting for a while, of course, for two to three months. Then I will remove the temporary and make the a permanent one. Uh, coming back to the case, as you see here, I did the splinting for this uh, patient. And this is the result after three months. As you see, we get very nice emergence profile for one piece implant. Because really it is difficult, not like on the two piece implant. And in this view, you see this color of the connective tissue, of the uh, keratinized tissue. The fight between the bacteria, the plaque, will be here. And the plaque never reaches the crystal region of the implant. By this way, you will get rid of the bone resorption and the problem is related to the perimplantitis. Plus to the uh, advantages of the aesthetic, you can get with uh, such nice uh, emergence profile. The next question, how we can get, if you get such nice emergence profiles, okay, and very nice, but how we can get a master cast with the same shape and dimension of the soft tissue as we saw now on the photo inside the patient's mouth, how we can get a cast, how we can take a very good impression. What's the technique? We have this technique called duplicate impression post for making customized Impression post. We made the customized healing abutment, but for the impression, again, we have to make the customized impression post. It is very easy technique. Here inside the, the uh, cervical mold, we have this space. It's created specially for the duplication, as you see. We place the analog in this way. Then we power the uh, heavy body, the putty, and then we place the analog in this way. Then after that, we place the customized healing abutment. Then we place the putty all around the customized healing abutment. And we will wait until the, the putty will set. Then we remove the customized healing abutment and we get this nice space, as you see. This is the same shape and dimension of the uh, soft shoe that we have inside the patient's mouth. Now it's record, recorded in this duplication method. Then after that, we place the uh, transfer, we fix the transfer over the analog in this way. After that, we place an increments, flowable composite, and then light cure in this way. And the result, we will get such nice customized impression post, as you see. This is specially used for this patient because it's customized. And in this way, as you see, we place the customized impression post inside the patient's mouth like that, and then we will take the impression. And as you see, this is the impression. The customized impression post will come out with the impression like that. This is the analog, the analog is fixed to the uh, impression and send it to the lab. This point is very important. After taking the impression, we have to place the uh, customized healing abutment that, that's placed in the first visit. This is very important. Otherwise, within hours, all the soft tissue will be ruined and there will be no emergence profile. So this point is very, very important. We have to, again, place the customized healing abutment until finishing of the processes. Okay. So this is the cast. As you see, we have a very nice uh, master cast and the lab will work on this cast. This is a zirconium crown made by Karim Dental Lab. Very nice crown, as you see. And then when the patient come back, we remove the uh, customized healing abutment. 
then we place the crown as you see. Here, as you see, we have a very nice soft tissue and with the highly keratinized. So by this way, we get the aesthetic and also, of course, we will get rid of many problems regarding the periodontal issues, the oral hygiene, the, also the plaque accumulation. I think one of the advantages of this technique is the fitness of the crown because you don't have Sometimes, as we all know, uh, the in case of the one piece implant, sometimes the finishing line or the end of the abutment goes beneath the soft tissue. So sometimes the crown not fit to the abutment. And as we all know, it will cause problem regarding the retention, also the, the regarding the health status of the soft tissue and the periodontal problems for the future. So as you see here, the type of the implant is used is basal SS, little but rich the opposite cortical bone with very nice osseointegration, integration and the fitness of the soft of the crown is perfect really. So with this technique, we can provide the patient with temporary crown, which is very important and especially with the same visit, you do the surgery, and you give the patient temporary crown, which is very good for the patient, this is number one. Also with this technique, you can supplant very easily the implant. There is no need to wait for the lab to make the temporary, for example, or sometimes you may use other techniques in your clinic, but really it's difficult. But for this uh, technique, it's very easy because the crown is made from the composite and you are going to do the supplanting also with the same material, it will be very strong uh, splinting and eventually you will get very high success rate of the immediate loading, of course. And of course, obtaining very nice emergence profile, which is very important, as we said, for the both of the periodontal issues and also for the uh, aesthetic reason. And of course, for obtaining very nice master cast so the lab will be happy to work with you and you can get very nice result from the lab. So by this way, the technique will provide you with many advantages. Of course, it needs too much time, but I think it deserves. Here, another case, uh, the upper right, second premolar here, we have this piece of the root remain. So we gave the patient anesthesia and we extracted the uh, tooth and the root. Then we made an incision, then we reflected the flap. As you see here, we made uh, the drilling. We usually, for the one piece implant, we only use the first drill. We don't use the second drill. Sometimes we may need to use the second drill. And this is one of the advantages of the one piece implant. It is the surgical technique is very, very simple. Then we place the uh, compressive implant from the root implant system, as you see. And you can estimate whether it's enough or you can go more down to the bone because you, re you reflected the flap. As you see, and we, in this patient, we have very good bone, as you see in this uh, case. Again, we go back to the mold, of course, depending on the uh, cervical guide. We have to use the cervical guide, and then we coming back to the mold to make the customized healing abutment, as you see, like that. And for me, usually, I don't wait. I gave the patient anesthesia, and until the anesthesia will achieve, I try to prepare the uh, customized healing abutment by uh, measuring the dimensions that we have by using the cervical guide and then by using the mold to make the uh, customized healing abutment in this way. Even you can make uh, many uh, customized healing abutment ready to be used when you need it. And as you see, we have this uh, soft tissue because usually we made the uh, incision a little bit more palatal, usually. 
and then we make it rolled like that, what's called roll, roll technique. So by this way, we will get more soft tissue and more keratinized uh, amount of the tissue. So this is, I think, very important also, and it will aid to make more nice emergence profile and more healthier tissue. Then, of course, followed with uh, suturing with nylon. After that, with splinting, the same technique that we followed in the same case. Then we wait for three months. This is the result after three months. As you see, we have we got very nice emergence profile. This is the situation before we start, and this is the situation at the before taking the impression. Again, we follow the same technique. We made the customized uh, impression post in this way. This is the customized impression post for this patient. We fixed the impression post uh, on the implant in this way, and we took the impression. Here we use do two techniques, as you see. This one on the left side, we use the customized impression post, as you see. And also, with this technique, I use the direct technique, what's called lag in crown and bridge. Because many clinicians, they took the impression in this way. But uh, if, you, if you use the, uh, this technique, the customizing healing abutment, you have to take the impression in the technique of using the customized impression post. Otherwise, you will not get very nice emergence profile on the cast. This note is very, very important to understand. So as you see, this is the uh, impression for the lower, and this is the bite, and this is the master impression. And this, this impression I took just for explanation. If you want to take the impression directly on the implant, it's not good. You have to take the impression on the customized impression post. And of course, after taking the impression, we have to replace again the customized healing abutment. Why? To make sure that the emergence profile and the soft tissue remain on its shape and the dimension. This is very, very important. So when the patient came back after a week, we placed the crown, as you see. And in this view, it's very clear we have a very nice gingiva with a very nice color of the keratinized tissue. Okay. The question is, can we use this technique for restoring multiple teeth? Of course. For this lady with missing first premolar, lower first premolar, also first and second molar, as you see, we don't have enough soft tissue and I took the, the impression and then we made the cast. So by this way, you can also measure and decide which guide is good for the patient. It will aid you even for single implant placement or for multiple, you can use this technique. This is after flower reflection and drilling, as you see, for this patient, we placed four implants. We are restoring three teeth, but in case of the one piece implant, it's better to place more implants. Why? In order to get more anchorage from the bone and to get more success rate. Then after that, I placed four customized healing abutments and then sutured in this way. All the customized healing abutment Splinted together, as you see, with the flowable composite. Why? Again, as we said, this is mandatory in order to get success for the immediate loading. Okay. This is the result after three months. You see, we started from here. This photo is taken by the mirror. This is why it's in this way. And this photo is, direct, uh, is taken directly. Here, as you see, we don't have enough soft tissue with shallow vestibule. 
you see the vestibule, we don't have it enough, especially here. But in this photo, we have very well and nice keratinized tissue, both buccally, also lingually, with ni nice emergence profile of the gingiva. Also, we have a vestibule. So by this way, we'll get rid of the problems regarding the oral hygiene and the perimplantitis. So we, we started here, and this is the result. As you see here, a uh, very nice keratinized tissue, and also we have a vestibule. Okay. This is another interesting case uh, with miss missing of both upper first premolars. This side is quite simple, but regarding the other side, as you see, with this a deficiency of the heart and soft tissue. Here again, we use the one piece implant. It is very clear now. You see the, the concavity of the bone and the soft tissue. So we followed the same technique. We placed the one piece implant. Then we made the customized healing abutment using the cervical system. Then we tried to harvest the uh, the graft and we used the punch here as you see with the same anesthesia the dimension of the of this punch was six millimeter then this uh, graft this is the side of the donor then we used the graft and we placed under the flap in this way sutured and fixed it this is directly after the surgery. And of course, the, uh, the crowns or the customized healing abutment separated with the adjacent teeth. And this is the result after surgery directly. As you see, we have a very deficient and here it is good. It's directly after surgery. And this is the result after one week, about one week, as you see. We start from here, and now one week, it is good and stable. The graft is stable, and this is the neuron donor side. It's sealed like that. Okay. Huge difference, of course. But after three months, you see, we have we got very nice result. So we can do some nice games with the soft tissue regarding the one piece. As we saw many times with the two piece, we can do it with the one piece and we can get very nice results. So we started here like that, and the result is like that, as you see. Actually, it is very good. Okay. Next, this one is a, a case of anterior tooth missing central incisor. So we started with the uh, cervical guide and we chose the large one, anterior large, as you see. Then we make an incision like that, we reflect the flap. As you see, we have a very deficient bone. So we have many choices to treat such clinical situations. We all know we can use the conventional techniques, guided bone regeneration, and simultaneously you can place the implant or you can wait then to place the two-piece implant. But I think we have other options, of course, depending on many points you have to be considered regarding the type of the patient, of course, the age of the patient, the also the skill of the operator. So with this deficient bone, I think the basal implant is the best choice especially the basal SS. What is basal SS? The, the one-piece implant with the design of the basal implant, but surface treated like with the a compressive implant. It's completely surface treated like with the two-piece implant. So you will get sooner or faster the osseointegration. integration. Plus to that, you have a very long neck. So in this way, especially near to the crystal region, if you still don't have enough bone, you can get benefit from this type of the uh, implant. 
So this is after drilling. As you see, you have, we have very thin bone remain on the buccal side. Then we use the basal implant, basal SS. As you see, it's surface treated, but with long neck. So with this long neck, it will, this neck goes to this region near to the, the bone, which is deficient. So it is more healthier for the soft tissue to deal with very smooth structure, not the rough. For example, if you use the uh, two-piece implant, we have the abutment and the connections and the problems start here. Even for the compressive, because we have threads, we face the same problem. But with the basal implant, because we have very long neck, this is why maybe for some time, for some clinical situation, it may be the best choice for some of the clinical situations. So going back to the uh, cervical guide, as you see, uh, inside the guide, we have two holes, as you see, this one and this one. This is called centered, and this one is called off-centered. It's chosen according to the clinical situation. Here, I made two customized healing abutment. This one is made centered, as you see. It's at the center of the customized healing abutment. But as you see, the customized healing abutment goes more palatally to the palatal direction. Sometimes we may need to use the off-centered like that. As you see, some of the composite goes more backally. So the innovative holding provide you with two silicone molds, one centered like that, that you can make all the customized healing abutment with the hole at the center of the, the healing abutment. Or you can make the customized healing abutment, what's called off-centered, so it will help you in some clinical situation as you see in this case. Okay. Then, of course, I did suturing and I supplanted the crown with the adjacent, adjacent tooth. You can make the shape of the crown as you wish, and you remove the high spots, of course. And this is the uh, temporary crown, of course, and also it acts as a customized healing abutment until the soft tissue and the hard tissue will heal. Okay. And this is the uh, clinical situation after about three months. As you see, we have very nice customized, very nice emergence profile for the uh, upper central incisor. And also we have enough soft tissue on the buccal side. Let us see the clinical situation before we start. We started from here and now we get this nice emergence profile and also with enough buccal soft tissue so that it will help to protect the, the implant and the bone from any plaque accumulation. Okay, then we made the customized impression post, as you see, and then we took the impression. But unfortunately, the, the pandemic uh, problem starts. Now the cast is in the lab. We are waiting for the situation to solve and we to put the final processes for this patient. Okay. For this lady, as you see, we have uh, this, this canines, this canines is deciduous canine, you see, primary canines, both upper uh, right and left side. And we took the CBCT for the patient and we find uh, there is two permanent canines impacted. And as you see, we reflected flap and we tried to remove the uh, impacted canines. We removed the both impact can end, uh, in the same visit. And we said for the patient, we can place the implant in the same visit, but the patient refused because the type of the patient was very, uh, was very fearful to this kind of the surgery. So just in the first visit, we did the uh, removal, surgical removal of the impacted canines. And then this is the uh, suturing. This is the extracted. Uh, then the patient disappeared. Then after one, one nearly one year, came back. 
and decided to place the implants. So we uh, extract the deciduous teeth, as you see, these are the deciduous teeth uh, of the primary canine. And then we placed the uh, one piece implants on both sides. And as you see, both of them <clears throat> directed to the, uh, to the buckle. So with the aid of bending to the neck of the implant, now the directions is good for both implant. And then we cemented the customized healing abutment on the uh, abutment of the implants. Then with the same technique, acid itching, then bonding. Then after that, we placed flowable composite to supplant the uh, customized healing abutment to the adjacent teeth. Then of course with light cute, then you can, you can shape the crown and remove the high spots. And this is the result. It will remain like that for three months at least, of course. Then after that, we remove the, this customized healing abutment, you see. Now this is the result and we end with very nice emergence profile for both sides. And we took the impression with the duplicate technique. <clears throat> and this is the uh, crown made from Emacs. And this is the result, as you see. OK. This is the last case. Uh, this is the patient with orthodontic treatment, as you see. And we did the same surgery. Uh, we opened flap. After that, we placed the implants and we fixed the customized healing abutment. But the patient also have another problem. The patient was with the congenital missing of the lateral incisors. So the uh, orthodontist tried to uh, place the canines at the area of the uh, lateral incisor, as you see. So we placed uh, implants at the area of the canine. After that, uh, you see this is the emergence profile that we uh, found it after three months, as you see here and here also. Also, we did a veneer for the lateral incisors because as we said, it was canine, so we transformed with the veneer to the lateral incisor. And this is the occlusal view. As you see, we have, we have very nice soft tissue for both sides. And this is the veneer work. And this is the final result. As a, as a conclusion, I said, I can say, we can get very nice emergence profile of the soft tissue for the one piece implant as for the two, two as for the two piece implant just we have to follow some techniques and some knowledge and we can use the cervical system because it makes the procedure the whole procedure starting from the selection of the guide or the dimension of the customized healing abutment till the end, till making the customized healing abutment, even for the one piece, as we said, we need to make the splinting. So by this way, we can get very nice emergence profile. And we can also get very nice aesthetic for the patient. Also, we can get rid from the problems regarding the peri-implantitis and plug accumulation. And thank you. In case if you have any questions or comments. Dr. Abdjalil. Yes. Just like, would like to tell you, wow, simply wow. Really outstanding. And I love what you did. I love the, the, uh, the cases, the results. It's amazing. Uh, results of what that you achieved with the one piece implant. Um, Made made a big change for me for my thoughts, and yes. I think you uh, solved some problems of uh, of uh, aesthetic problems of the uh, one piece implant. This is very interesting. Uh, I have a question from where we can get the cervic cervical. Uh, I get it from the ID IDS in Cologne in Germany before one year. But uh, I think you can get it from the online, maybe.
Okay. Yes, I, I can later on place the uh, website of the company in the comment section so the uh, operators can get benefit from the, from that. Yeah, we have to get, have to get some discussions on that, but I love, really love what you what you did. Here we have some some hellos from, we are, we are all around the world are listening to us. Some hello yes. from Senegal, from Nairobi, from Peru, from Morocco. Uh, yes. This is, this is really good. Uh, I will start with the, the first question here. Uh, up. Very nice. It seems like temporary crown with one piece implant. Of course, this you are you are making temporary crown, or or you only making fixing the cervical profile. Yes, this is the question, Doctor Mohammed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I will. I do the the both. Why? Because as we all know. We try to make a customized healing abutment. The reasons behind that to make uh, to get a very nice emergence profile. This is number one. But plus to that, to make a temporary crown, of course, for the patient. So and to splint the same crown to the adjacent tooth. So we can get many benefits from this idea. Okay, uh, I will read the question. Then I have my me a question. So yes. the question from Dr. Elias, uh, a question, doctor, what determines the big in this case? Which one? Uh, actually, I think the cases of one piece implant, what, what, he, what is determining the, the big? The, I think the big, he, mean, he means the bone implant contact, I think, uh, I, I believe. The bone implant contact? <clears throat> yeah. I, I don't understand the question. Yeah, me too. Can you can you please, Doctor? Yes, uh, if you are hearing me, to uh, yes. make it clear, make it, make your question please clear. Uh, my question, uh, Doctor Abdijali, is when when you are split, splitting this uh, the implant, yes, with with the natural tooth. As we know, when we are making an immediate cloth implant, we don't need to have any movement. Yes, we don't want that. So if you are splitting it to to adjacent tooth, we know that the tooth are are, are mobile a little bit. Yes. So this this mobility will not affect your OC integration. Yes, uh, a very nice question. We have to uh, at the beginning estimate the mobility of the adjacent to teeth. Of course, uh, if you have mobility, we have to avoid splinting. Mm -hmm. But if you see uh, clinically, it's stable. We can do it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, plus to that, we have to give the patient instructions regarding the uh, way of eating and the taking soft diet only, mm -hmm. especially for the first uh, two months. It's is very, very important, these instructions. Okay, thank you. Here we have another question. Does the cervical system correspond to a thin, thin biotype? Yes. Yes, it's compatible with the, all the types of the implant and with all the systems of the implant okay yes uh, it's usually the always always the cervical system is used only for the two-piece implant as i know i tried to use for the one-piece implant maybe other uh, operators try to use for the one-piece implant but uh, i tried the one-piece implant from my side i asked uh, one of the colleagues uh, named dr uh, lonis from the greece Thanks for him, uh, but uh, all his uh, of his explanation was about the two-piece implant, because no one uh, used for the one-piece implant. But uh, I tried to use, and I think it is more simpler to you to be used for the one-piece implant. Okay. Uh, another question: Basal implant for single crown is it contraindicated, or the rules changed? Yes, according to the manufacturer instructions, they said. It is not good to place basal implant for single implant. But uh, for me, I have uh, many cases. I used basal implant, even the smooth one, because we have the smooth, uh, the smooth uh, version, the polished one, the machine surface. And also we have the surface treated, treated what's called basal SS. But I usually uh, prefer the basal SS and uh, we can get success 
with the uh, basal implant for single tooth implant replacement, but we have to consider some points regarding, regarding uh, getting very high torque and getting contact with the opposite cortical bone and trying to make sepalent, this is very important, giving very good instructions to the patient not to bite on this tooth at all, and also making sepalenting. By this, uh, if you follow these steps, you will get very high success rate regarding using the basal implant for the single implant for single tooth uh, replacement. Actually, the basal SS is not following the same rule as this basal uh, machine surface. This is yes. why we can make on basal SS as a uh, immediate load, uh, even single single unit. Yeah, you are yes. right. This is uh, why I prefer the basal SS. Yeah. Uh, very nice and interesting subject. Uh, well done. But I have one question, dear bro. Is it possible to perform the same procedure for delayed implantation? For the delayed implant placement, so in this way, we are talking about the two-piece implant. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yes, of course, because for the one-piece implant, we cannot do it delay loading mm -hmm. because Yes, uh, we, we all know the abutment is uh, outside of the gingiva and it's prone to many uh, forces from the tongue, even sometimes from the foot or also. So in, in this case, we are talking about two-piece implant. Yes, we can do it, of course, but in this way, you need another surgery. Okay. Yes. During the, the second step surgery, during the second surgery, yes, we can place these. And, you follow uh, the same steps. Yes. And, and this time, and in this case, uh, you wait for healing period in order yes. to shape this. How many times before taking the implant? How many times you work for this, the healing? I, I usually uh, place the uh, customized healing abutment and I usually wait for about three months. Okay, so you place the implant, then you you, you uh, I'm thinking for, I'm talking for the implant with the two stages implant. Yes, for the two stage implant, you can place the customized healing abutment at the same visit of the implant placement. Yeah, but or, imagine imagine you are you, you make it in delayed. Yes, yes of course. Sometimes we may face we may place the implant and there is no primary stability. It's better, of course, to cover the implant with the soft tissue to do the suturing. Then we will wait, for example, three to four months. Then after that, for the second uh, surgery, you have to reopen, of, of course, we have to make the flap and we place the uh, customizing abutment. And again, we have to wait about three weeks. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, so before rolling the flap, should I remove the outer epithelial layer for the rolling part? Yes, uh, there is too many techniques, too many literatures talking about this, uh, removing the epithelium or not. Uh, but for me, I don't remove any epithelium and I just roll back the, uh, the flap underneath the customized healing abutment. And I found in my results, it's very okay and we can get very nice result. But of course, we can de-epithelize the part of the flap that goes inside the, again, inside the, or underneath the customized healing abutment. Okay, this is actually the question that I, I asked you uh, in the beginning. He, he is asking the same question. Splitting an implant to a teeth, each time the patient bite, there is micro movement of teeth, and since they are splinted, the implant will move. So you answered the question uh, before. Let us go to another one, if I have. So if we if we use composite alone, what's the yes. difference with the technique? Only the composite. You mean we place the composite inside the mold instead of the? Yeah, I think yeah. Yes, uh, the whole procedure uh, it depends on the smoothness of the customized healing abutment. This point is very very important because we are dealing with the soft tissue. So if we try to use the composite, it's okay, but you have to spend more time regarding for the finishing and polishing of the customized healing abutment. Because uh, it's better, uh, even for the flowable, to use the nano version, not the micro or the macro one. Why? Because as we all know, 
with the nano, we can get more uh, smoother surface for the customized healing abutment. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. okay, we can use the composite, but I think it's difficult because the, the mold, number one, is made from silicon. Mm -hmm. So yes, and as we all know, the composite needs to be condensed. So the shape may be changed with the condensation. Okay. But with the flowable, uh, I think there is no need. So you put the, the flowable all around the, for example, the analog uh, around the impression post or the uh, transfer. So by this way, the flowable is better. And of course, the nano version is better than the micro and the macro hybrid composite. Why? Because with the nano, we can get more smoother uh, customized healing abutment. Plus to that, sometimes if you think that the customized healing abutment is not quite smooth, of course, uh, we have to polish the customized healing abutment. At this point is very, very important. Great. Yes. Uh, in case of orthodontic treatment, we have bone resorption by tooth movement. Can you put implant inside those movement and the resorption? Uh, it doesn't diff uh, interfere with the integration of the implant? I think it depends on the situation. If we talk in general, uh, it's difficult to answer. But if you have, for example, very good bone, for example, and the adjacent tooth is good, maybe, for example, not quite mobile, yes, why not? We can do it. But the problem, as we all know, uh, all the issues related to the peri-implantitis is one of the reasons that occur is related to the peri peri periodontitis. This is number one. And plus to that, if, you're, if you are going to do the uh, immediate loading, this is, again, how you do the splinting or sometimes because of the mobility the, the patient may made more forces during the bite so i think in in this situation we need uh, overall to evaluate the patient's situation regarding the radiograph the clinical situation and then to decide okay uh how you fix the impression post to the gingival former Yes, uh, as we said, we made the uh, customized impression post and the uh, customized impression post, we have two wings. What is the reason behind these two wings? In order the impression goes all around the impression post and get retention inside the impression. So when we take out the impression, the impression post come out with the impression. So this is the point, Dr. Mohammed. Okay, thank you. Another question. A question from Shubarga Sambalpur. I don't know if I pronounce it well. How do you remove the excess cement, cement after final cementation? And which cement do you prefer for the cementation? Yes. Uh, I placed the customized healing abutment before suturing the flap. This is very clear. So in case, this is one of the advantages of this technique, in case if I have any excess of the cement, I can remove it before suturing. This is number one. Number two, most of the excess cement come out from the top of the customized healing apartment because as we all know, the audience, they can go back to, the, to this video because it became, it remain on the page of the open data community. We have a hole at the top of the impression post or the customized healing abutment. It will, the excess all come out from this hole. But sometimes if it goes uh, uh, beneath the soft tissue, still the flap is not sutured, so we can remove the excess. Then we can do the, uh, the uh, suturing. Regarding the type of the cement, I usually use the uh, cement from the curare. Uh, and uh, it's a very good quality. And sometimes for the multiple implants, when I use this technique, for example, for the patient that I used four implants for three teeth, I used the cement, glass and number seven from GC company, GC Fuji Plus, which is more stronger than the QRI. Why? The idea is that to get very strong splinting for the uh, customized healing abutment, or we can say the provisional processes. 
and we can get more success for the uh, implant and the processes. Okay, here we have a question I think you answered during the lecture. Can we use this technique with multiple implant placement? Yes, of course, uh, because of the time, but I have uh, even cases with full arch cases. I did it with the same technique and you can get the same result. Okay, how to control lateral loading as a result of tongue thrust in case uh, Kennedy K class two uh, uh, type? You know, Dr. Muhammad, not for the immediate loading is not indicated for all the cases. The case selection is very important, as we all know. Not every case is indicated for the immediate loading. For example, the bruxism patient with the bruxism. The patients with para parafunctional habits, as the, the audience asking. Any patient with parafunctional habits is contraindicated for the immediate loading. I any agree. patient with, yes, with uh, any uneducated that do not follow the instructions by the dentist, by the operator, it's also not indicated for the uh, immediate loading. So not every case is indicated for the immediate loading. One of the points uh, regarding my presentation is how to control the occlusion. I think with this technique, we can make the occlusal table more narrow because it's a provisional process, it's a temporary. So by this way, you will decrease the loads, even the lateral forces, the occlusal forces, because we can control the occlusal table. We can make it more narrow. And by this way, we make the force less on the crown. And by this way, we can get more success for the immediate loading. Uh, what are the complications you faced, please? The complications I faced with this technique, this is a very nice question. Uh, Sometimes I found that the, uh, the flow will composite, that I powered all around the uh, transfer, the, the yellow plastic. <clears throat> Sometimes it, it smooths. Why? Because it's smooth. This is why later on, uh, I did some retentive grooves, so I prefer uh, for any other for any operator to uh, who try to use the this technique. It's better to make some retentive grooves. This is number one. One uh, of the other problems that I faced: the color of the transfer. It's yellow, especially for the anterior teeth. Uh, if the company trade company tried to make this transfer, I I don't know which is difficult or simple for them. If they try to make the color of this transfer in white in color, it will be more better for the patient aesthetically. Otherwise, with other points, I didn't face any problem. Remain one point regarding the uh, one-piece implant, uh, and I forgot to mention about uh, when, because as we all know, the dimension, the height of the abutment is about seven millimeter. Sometime uh, when the patient close his or her mouth, it gets in contact with the opposite dentition. So when to remove the excess of, from the abutment, from the height, I mean. Of course, with this technique, it's better to remove before placement of the uh, customized heal healing abutment. I mean, when you place the implant, and before placement of the customized healing abutment, cut from the height of the abutment with, with the special drill, then place the customized healing abutment. It's, it's more simpler and easier. Okay, the last question. Uh, is it possible to do this procedure uh, for one piece implant without raising a flap? Yes, I tried with some patients, but not for every case how to decide. I think it depends on the clinical situation. For example, I tried with some cases, just I drilled, I uh, make the epithelization of the soft tissue before drilling, before doing anything. Just with the aid of fissured bear, I made some uh, epithelization of the uh, soft tissue on the crystal ridge. Then I did the drilling. Then directly I placed the implant and after that, I placed the uh, customized healing abutment and I get very nice results also from this technique. 
but you cannot play with the soft tissue. As I uh, show the, show the uh, audience, sometimes you, you have to do some games with the soft tissue. So it's better, I think, to raise the flap because you will be sure about the dimension of the implant and the even the selection of the size of the implant. I think it's better to raise the flap. And as you saw from the presentation, all the types of the flap wa was very simple, not too much large flap. Thank you, doctor, for this nice presentation. Uh, and we, I think we will meet to have a chess party. Yes, uh, of course. <laughs> I am ready for the chess. <laughs> yeah. yes. And uh, have a nice evening, and thank you for what you, are, you did. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Mohammed, and thank you for the audience. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye bye.